Hello and welcome back. Today, we are going to be discussing the heart of the Republic and the galaxy itself, Coruscant. Ever since I watched The Phantom Menace for the first time as a kid, I've always believed that Coruscant was the most unique planet in the Star Wars galaxy. The idea that the planet is one large city has always fascinated me. I've always wondered how a planet like that would compare to Earth, so that's what I will be discussing today. I will be going over notable features of the planet and comparing those to similar features here on Earth, just so we can really understand the size of the Eucumenopolis. Generally regarded as the birthplace of humanity hundreds of thousands of years before the Battle of Yavin, Coruscant is probably the most interesting planet in the Star Wars galaxy. Being the hub of life in the galaxy, it's home to over 2 trillion sentient beings. The makeup of that is around 68% human and 32% alien. To put that to perspective, if every human stood back to chest across the equator here on Earth, we would circle it around 100 times. If the citizens of Coruscant did the same, they would circle the Earth close to 25,000 times. That would be a line of people and aliens 10 kilometers wide circling across the Earth. At first glance, that 2 trillion seems completely unreasonable. Surely that number makes no sense. Well, it doesn't, but not for the reason you may think. To begin, Coruscant has been stated to be close to the same size as Earth, 12,240 kilometers in diameter, compared to Earth's 12,756 kilometers in diameter. So you're telling me a planet with 250 times the amount of people as Earth is 500 kilometers smaller in diameter? Well, that's not the whole case. When discussing Coruscant, we cannot talk about the planet without discussing its many levels. Hundreds of thousands of years before the planet we are introduced to in The Phantom Menace, the citizens faced a dilemma. Being at the center of all trade routes of the galaxy brought in many off-worlders to the civilization. The population was growing too fast for the planet to handle, so there was not enough space for the people to thrive. Resources weren't the issue though. You could always buy more steel and import more food, but you can't buy more space. With this issue, they were only left with one reasonable option, to drain the oceans. With the oceans now deep crevices into the crust of the planet, this gave them tens of thousands of kilometers to deal with for space. After draining the oceans, and going as far into the planet as possible, there's only one other direction to go, and that is up. Over the next thousands of years, they built 5,127 levels starting from the surface. This allows for infinitely more people than just the measly surface area of the planet, enough to hold 2 trillion beings or even more. Because of this, the population density isn't as high as one may think. Using the surface level of the planet, or level zero, we get a surface area of 471 million kilometers. Using that, we get a population density of around 4,200 beings per square kilometer, or 11,000 beings per square mile. Comparing that to Earth's 59 people per square kilometer, we realize why the population decided to change the scape of the planet. The one variable we didn't account for in that, though, by the 5,000 levels of Coruscant, which essentially multiplies that surface area by 5,000, assuming each level is habitable, of course. The deeper you go towards Coruscant's surface, the more uninhabitable and crime-ridden it gets. In the canon comic, Star Wars Adventures 2017, Haldo and Leia need to access level four, but it is believed to be inaccessible. By climbing through the pipework, they accessed the level and found a lost museum. As for legends, it's believed the further one descended into the underworld, the more dangerous it got. Starting off with shady clubs and venues, to bounty hunters and criminals. These are the least of your worries though, considering it's believed the lowest levels contain hypertrophied vermin and zombie-like creatures. These could just be myths and campfire stories, but for the sake of this video, We'll go with the canon explanation and assume all levels are habitable, if not accessible. So, to account for all the levels in our population density, we will multiply the surface area by 5,127. The total livable space on Coruscant is actually around 2.4 trillion square kilometers. 
That gives us a population density of around 0.83 citizens per square kilometer, or 1.3 citizens per square mile. You're telling me this is less than one citizen per square kilometer? Okay, maybe two trillion is a gross underestimate for the way the population is described. I'm sure that most of the population is packed into the upper levels anyways. But regardless, even assuming half of the levels are unlivable, this still gives us a very low population density. What, is half the planet vacant for God's sakes? I mean, we really only see the main section of Coruscant with the Jedi Temple, 500 Republica, and the Senate Building. Maybe the rest of the planet isn't nearly as busy. I mean, if you showed an alien a movie of Earth, and only showed them New York City, they would believe the rest of the planet was like that as well. So it's entirely possible that a good portion of the planet is not actively being used. It is way more likely, though, that the 2 trillion number was just pulled out of someone's ass. I doubt George Lucas was thinking about the population density of Coruscant when he added it to the Phantom Menace. Coruscant's cityscape is what sets it apart from all the other planets in the galaxy. Its tall high-rises and deep pits really add to its character. But really, how tall are some of these buildings? When Anakin jumps out of his speeder in Episode 2, you really get a sense of scale looking down at the seemingly endless pit. 500 Republica is probably the most well-known residence in all of Star Wars home to some of the most powerful and wealthy beings in the galaxy, including figures such as Sheev Palpatine and Bail Organa. It's not just known for its guests, but its incredibly massive height. Standing at four kilometers tall, it's significantly taller than any structure here on Earth. For us Americans, four kilometers is around 13,000 feet, or 3,313 Jawas, if you were curious. The building, is the height of most mountains here on Earth, and pretty large mountains at that. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is currently the tallest building on Earth. It is nearly five times shorter, standing at 828 meters, or 2,700 feet. And then down there we have the microscopic Empire State Building. I didn't think those words would ever come out of my mouth. Thinking about how tall 500 Republica really is, it got me thinking about the oxygen levels that high up. I'm sure the residents have balconies on their apartments. I have been to the top of a 13,000 foot mountain and the oxygen is quite thin. It's livable, but sitting on your balcony that high up surely wouldn't be fun after a while. That's not even accounting for the wind either. Being that high up, there are no buildings to block the immense wind coming your way. The other variable to consider in that situation is how the building is measured. The source I got the initial height from doesn't mention if this height is from level 1 or level 5,127. I think we can assume that's the height that it protrudes out of the levels. Being such a prestigious building, they wouldn't want it in contact with the underworld scum. Assuming each level is 10 feet or one story, we can now safely add 51,000 feet to its height from the surface level. So standing at the top, you are about 12 miles or 19.5 kilometers from level 0. There is nothing on Earth that reaches that height from sea level. The highest you can get is Mount Everest, and that is around 5 miles in height. Most individuals skilled enough to climb it still need supplemental oxygen to get to the top. I can imagine being twice as high up, one would need some assistance to breathe. This is Coruscant we're talking about though. This is the planet that has artificial weather and has been civilized for hundreds of thousands of years. I think we can safely make the assumption that they have the tools to raise the oxygen levels and lower the wind speeds for the prestigious guests at the top of the structure. Either that, or every resident has a Darth Vader breathing respirator. Just for fun, I was wondering how long it would take the average person to climb such a large building. This would take the average person 7.75 hours of continuous walking upstairs to reach the top of the building. That's assuming someone averages 30 steps a minute for around 8 hours straight. Burning around 2300 calories, you would hope there's a good meal waiting for you at the top. Thank the maker they have elevators in Star Wars. And those must be really fast elevators at that. Could you imagine getting to your room on the top floor and you left your keys in your speeder? A piece of me would die waiting for that 30 minute elevator ride. Another iconic building on Coruscant is of course 
the Jedi Temple. There is no official size listed of the Jedi Temple from any source I can find, so we will have to get to work to figure this out. The only part of the Jedi Temple with a listed size are the four master statues found at the entrance of the temple. Those are standing at 30 meters in height. The best look at these is in Revenge of the Sith during Order 66 when Anakin is storming the Jedi Temple with the 501st. Here, we can see the whole temple with the tiny statues at the bottom of the frame. We can cut out the shape of the statue and stack them to get a rough estimate of the height. Now it may not be perfect, but it looks like the Jedi Temple is around 26 statues tall to the top of the base. This is not including the towers that protrude up. That is 780 meters or 2,500 feet. To get the height of the towers, we'll use this image here of the top. Using the same statue to the same scale, 14 statues stacked up make up the size of the main council tower in the middle. Since that tower is set back in comparison to the statues that are sitting in the front of the building, we will add 100 meters to the height to account for that margin of error, making that tower around 520 meters or 1,706 feet. Adding this with the previous numbers of the base, we get a total height of 1,300 meters or 4,200 feet. As we can see, it's significantly taller than another popular Earth landmark in the Eiffel Tower. Thinking about this makes it that much funnier knowing that when Ahsoka left the Jedi Order in the Clone Wars Season 5, she must have taken like seven elevators and several flights of stairs before Anakin reached her outside. It was probably a whole 20 minute trek before they got to the bottom. Man, these writers really aren't taking these things into consideration. Not just the height of this building is incredible. We also have to mention the width. We don't have to do much different for the width. We can see, using the same image, that half of the Jedi Temple is about 20 of these statues, or 600 meters. Making the full length 1200 meters, 1.75 miles, or 3,700 feet. Assuming that the temple is a perfect square, we get a first floor surface area of 1.4 million meters, or 13.6 million square feet. Now that's just the first floor. If we were to include every floor, we would get millions more square footage. To get a rough estimate of that number, we know that the Great Temple Hall seen in many scenes throughout animation and live action is four stories or 40 feet in height. I highly doubt that every floor has ceilings that high, but this is currently the only measurement we can go off of. Using that number, we now know that the temple has exactly 64 stories. Wow, that's weird that the 2,560 feet height is divisible by 40 perfectly. It was the will of the force, I guess. Let's multiply that with the 13.6 million square feet, and we get a total square footage of 870.4 million. That number would be if the Jedi Temple was hollow, but we most certainly know it is not. Let's remove one third of the square footage to account for walls, furniture, and electrical mechanics. To get a final square footage of 652.5 million square feet. That's around 60.5 square kilometers. Definitely enough to fit all 10,000 active Jedi during the Clone Wars. Currently, the building on Earth with the most square footage is the New Century Global Center in China with 18 million square feet. That is microscopic compared to the Great Jedi Temple. You cannot mention buildings on Coruscant without discussing the Senate Building. Built 3,996 galactic years before the Battle of Yavin, the Senate Building has been the place for Senators across the galaxy to voice their opinions on pressing issues. Many key events in the Star Wars lore have happened in this massive building. There is no official height listed, but we do get a width of 1.25 miles, or around 2 kilometers. We will assume that is from the base of the structure and not the widest point. With this knowledge, we can cut out the base and compare it to the height. Lining this up, we see that it is slightly larger than the building, with about one-fifth of it poking above. 
Subtracting that one fifth from the two kilometers, we get a total height of 1.6 kilometers or exactly one mile. That is also 5,380 feet. This wasn't nearly as tall as I thought. I guess thinking about it though, there's no reason for it to be as tall as 500 Republica. You just need enough room to fit a handful of senators from each member world. Now, let's dive into the natural aspect of the planet, or the very little that remains. Coruscant was once a green world filled with forests and oceans. Like mentioned previously, the humans completely changed that when overpopulation became a concern. Some of the planet still remains though, one of those being the mountain Umate. The only exposed mountain left on the planet has become somewhat of a monument and a sight to see on the Yucca Monopolis. The city has built around it to the point that it's nearly hollowed out with tunnels and holes. The only exposed part is a small section of the tip. We can see this in shows like The Mandalorian or The Clone Wars, that no more than a hundred feet of it actually makes it past the highest level of the city. Knowing that Umate lays on level 5126, assuming one level is equal to one story or 10 feet, we can safely assume it's 51,260 feet tall. If we include the hundred or so feet exposed to the top, we can say the mountain is 51,360 feet tall. To make another comparison to Earth, Mount Everest is only 29,000 feet tall. Nearly twice the size of Everest, we can see not only the scale of Umate, but the true height of Coruscant's levels. There aren't any other notable natural features left on the planet, besides the Western Sea. There is no information on the size. All we know is that it's an artificial reservoir used for water to run the planet. Even though it's called a sea, it doesn't really count anyways. Before I finish up here, I thought it would be fun to compare the four main features we went over today. Here we see the three buildings paired up against each other. The Jedi Temple really looks small when it's put into perspective. This also makes you realize how large the Senate building really is. Just think of this image next time you rewatch Revenge of the Sith. Not only that, but it really makes me wonder the square footage of 500 Republica. That number would take a while to calculate, so let me know if you want to see that in a future video. Now, let's add Umate into the mix, and see how small these buildings really are. Holy crap, look at the Jedi Temple all the way down there. You can barely even make out what it is. This seriously puts to scale the size of the mountain, and not only that, but all the levels built up around it. We are so used to seeing the top level, we can't even begin to understand how high up it really is. I love discussing Coruscant and comparing it to our home planet. I wanted to add a section in this video about Coruscant's taxation, zoning, laws, and more, but that will have to wait. Let me know if you want me to discuss those topics. I'd be more than happy to. This video took me a quite a bit of research, so please like and subscribe on your way out. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching. Peace.